So why do we have reservoirs? I don't know. But I know a man who does. Let's get into it. Hi everyone, so here we are at Thrust Cross Reservoir today and we're going to learn a little bit about how reservoirs work. So, come all the way from West Yorkshire over into the north and we've got Granville Davis with us. Morning guy, how are you doing? Right? Yeah, I'm good thanks, how are you Granville? Yeah, not too bad, thanks, not too bad. Excellent. Beautiful day isn't it? Beautiful oh, it's day. lovely, it's a nice yeah. day to come yeah. up here and yeah. Uh, yeah, have a look round. So, um, Granville, why should we give a damn about reservoirs? Well, uh, the water that we provide to our customers, the drinking water, about half of that, or just under half of that, comes from reservoirs. So they're a really critical part of the drinking water supply system that we have, you know, for the, for the sort of five million customers or so that we serve across the region. So hopefully today we can find out a little bit more about them and why we should give a damn about them. Today, this morning, we've come out to Thrust Cross Reservoir, which is at the top end of the Washburn Valley, which is a tributary river into the River Wharf, just north of Leeds. Um, Thrust Cross Reservoir here is is the top one of four reservoirs that exist in this valley. Some people might know about Swinsty, Fuston and, and Lindy Wood, which are further down. Um, this, is, this was built, uh, is the last one of the four that was built, built in the 1960s. The others were built in, in the 19th century. So you can see at the moment, obviously it's the middle of July. So you, that's why you can see that kind of brown, um, sandy, rocky area shore, if you like, around it. And you can see where the greenery starts. So, in the middle of winter when we've had lots more rainfall we'd expect the reservoir to be a bit fuller than this you know up to around where the green greenery starts uh, but obviously during the summer months when it's a bit drier um, the water's going into supply we're not getting quite so much in off the catchments at this time of year so that's why you see the reservoir level starting to drop during the summer months down the dam structure now then so um, what you can see on the left they're actually dry at the moment these are the spillways that come down so when the reservoir is full and then we get more water coming in, we need to make sure that that water can safely get away. So that's what that steep spillway is. But you can see we're still putting water out. So that's what's called a compensation flow. So what we have to do is put flows into the downstream watercourse to help ensure that we're protecting the wildlife into the downstream watercourse. And also some of that flow will be going down to sort of feed the other reservoirs further down the chain. But if we come up sort of four or five months ago after the wet winter, um, we've just seen water sheeting over the top of these spillways and cascading down. Pretty spectacular sight to see. So we have to come back um, to winter to yeah, get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when the reservoir refills, come and have a look and you'll see some really quite spectacular flows spilling over the edge there. Now, Guy, if you can see, just as we come along the reservoir now, you can see the valley beginning to open up. Um, oh, yeah. So this, this reservoir kind of, we are facing, I think, pretty much sort of due north right now. And the reservoir and the valley kind of curves around to the northwest. So the top of the catchment, the top of those hills over there is probably about seven, eight kilometers further upstream now. Mm. So um, if you imagine, I mean, when I say a catchment, basically what that is is an area of land uh, and all the water that falls into that area of land will run to it, if you like, a common point. So in this case, when I talk about the catchment of the reservoir, it's all of the land upstream of the reservoir where when rain falls, it goes into the becks and the rivers and will eventually come into this reservoir. What's the point of a reservoir then? Well, basically the point of the reservoirs that we manage, and we've got around about 130 impounding reservoirs across Yorkshire as a whole, wow. um, is to store the water that falls off the catchments upstream of the reservoirs so that water is available mainly so that we can put it into public into water supply for our customers we treat it and, and it goes out to the taps to drinking water um, we do also have some reservoirs um, which exist purely for the purposes of providing compensation flows into the environment downstream of other reservoirs so making sure that where we have built a reservoir that's kind of damming across a river we're still providing some water into uh, the river downstream and the watercourse downstream to protect the ecology. So yeah, a bit of a different view of, um, of Thrust Cross Reservoir now. So um, you can see now, like we sort of mentioned earlier, you know, that the reservoir level is a little bit lower now because we're in the middle of July. Mm. If you just swing it around, guy, you can see this gauge board here, and which, as you can see, kind of reads from um, zero at the top and actually sort of starts to read down and that's because what we're doing with these gauge boards is measuring the, the depth of, or the, the level below top water level that the uh, the water is currently within the reservoir so zero is represents kind of when the reservoir is full um, and would be at the same level as the spillway that you can see in the background beyond it um, which is if you like the weir that kind of takes any excess water um, over those weirs that we looked at earlier and down the spillway into the river downstream 
Um, so yeah, I mean, this is showing, you know, currently, obviously, if we were stood here, uh, we'd be, what, knee deep in water if this was full, <laughs> something like that, or I would anyway, yeah. to back up slightly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, right now, obviously, this particular gauge board is completely, uh, completely dry, but that's, mm. as I say, it's because it's the middle of July, and, uh, you know, we've had some sort of hot and dry weather over the past few weeks, so, you know, not unnaturally, the reservoir level starts dropping through the summer period. So I guess I mean one of the things that we get asked is um, you know standing here looking at looking at this lovely reservoir is um, you know going into the future um, why can't we build or wouldn't we consider building newer reservoirs or more reservoirs you know um, to help supply demand into the future with population growth and with, and with climate change um, and I think you know right now from a from a Yorkshire perspective you know we're not in a position where we really need to consider that kind of option we would prefer to kind of maintain a balance of supply and demand into the future by um, continuing to reduce leakage from our network, by working with our customers to encourage them to use water more wisely and reduce, yeah. reduce demand that way. Um, Feels a bit like you're going a bit too, there's other things we can do isn't the first before we have to build them. Well, is that, exa right? that kind of thing, exactly, yeah. yeah. And I think also, you know, if you look at, um, the size of these structures, you know, they're not cheap to build, they're no, not no. cheap to maintain. <laughs> um, if you look at the, um, you know, the area that's occupied by a reservoir, um, you know, you're talking about an awful lot of land. Yeah. Um, and I think if you talk also about, or you think also about the way that, you know, people kind of really value the environments that we have around us, mm. you know, you can imagine that building a new reservoir in an upland area of the Pennines would not be a straightforward thing from, yeah. uh, from the perspective of planning and of sort of stakeholder views you know, the views of the public. Um, if you think about sort of some of the environmental impacts also bringing new supplies on, that's, you know, another reason why we'd continue to encourage, um, you know, customers to, mm. to reduce the demand, you know, to think about using water sort of wisely at home. Um, think about getting a water butt for water in the garden, yeah. you know, those kind of things. It's almost like your own little mini reservoir, isn't it, you know? Yeah, definitely. So you water butt in the garden. When it does rain, the water comes off your roof into your water butt. I was going to say into your butt there, but maybe that's a... Yeah. <laughs> well, we did a competition called Pimp, Pimp Your... Pimp My Butt. Pimp yeah. My Butt, yeah. My son finds it highly amusing <laughs> tell him that my butt's full uh, after, <laughs> after some heavy rain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, but, but, you know, it is, yeah. then it's your own personal reservoir, isn't it? Yeah. You've got your water butt. It's full of water. If you have a dry period and you need to water the plants, you can use your water butt instead of watering your plants with drinking water. So that was great to meet up with Granville and get an insight into Thrustcross. Next time on The Science Behind, I meet up with resource engineer Tom Young to find out more about reservoirs.